Something moves in the mists. Something sinister. Thorn. Rot. Plague. And claw. The affliction spreads. It hungers for more. Tread lightly in the wildwood, which shifts and fights. Accept our help, the ancient power of the Azmiri. Beware the spirits that yearn for freedom. And the heart of evil that waits in the dark. Howdy, do y'all. Welcome to the build guide for the Lone Rager. I originally made this build into a SRS of Enormity minion instability on hit build, but I I knew after posting that to the POE forums that I would, you know, I needed to be a bit more unique to stand out to try and get the build of the week kind of, in my mind, prestigious you know, build of the week capture. And uh, so I kind of went back to the drawing board and thought, what can I do that's that's really unique that nobody has done or is doing currently. And I came up with scaling Ignite instead of, instead of the on hit. Turns out it's pretty good. So that's what we're gonna go over. I'm gonna try and make this as short and sweet as possible while being as thorough as possible. So let's get into it. The Lone Rager is a single SRS build. We are scaling Ignite through the Keystone minion instability. For those that don't know, when you summon an SRS, your objective is to get it to low life, and then it will deal fire damage to surrounding enemies, uh, and it'll deal 33% of their life as fire damage. The way we facilitate that low life status is two ways in this build. One way, well, it's, it's actually, there is only one way for, at least for this build. Tavukai. We try not to invest into any chaos res. So all of my minions are currently in negative. And they take 20% of their max life per second is chaos damage. And eventually, over time, they will hit low life and explode, dealing fire damage. Another way that we do it is every time our minions deal a critical strike, they lose 15% of their life. Another very major aspect to this build is Necromantic Aegis. What this means is that this shield does not apply to us. It applies to our minion. And because SRS of Enormity always crits, SRS of Enormity will always lose 15% of their life when they crit. It also means that they gain a 60% damage over time multiplier if they've crit within the last eight seconds, which this is 100% uptime. So we have a lot of really good um, synergy with the Tavu Kai and our uh, regulator shield. Now, you're probably wondering, why only one? Well, since we're Ignite pro I didn't really see the reason to clutter up and invest into cast speed uh, for multiple SRS when we can just have one that pro-lifts 
you know, an entire pack of mobs. So with that said, we're going to go back to our roots of SRS and we're going to run Mark of the Red Covenant. Now you can have six max on SRS if you normally, but with this helmet, it reduces it to one. In return for that, we get the always ignite and the splash damage, which is more or less irrelevant, but it also gives us a massive boost. 200 and upwards of 250% increased damage to our summon raging spirit. Since we lost our rare helmet that gave us plus two to all minion, I wanted to at least keep my specters uh, and give them the plus two. So we went for a corrupted plus two to level of socketed minion gem helm. And uh, it really wasn't that expensive. And it keeps our specters hardy. Now, one of the cons of this build is my minions are negative chaos res, right? And we are prone to lose a specter every once in a while. Uh, but with this wonderful mastery, minions recover 5% of life on minion death. Uh, it really does not happen that often. Uh, uh, I haven't lost a specter in a boss fight. I generally lose them while I'm mapping. But, you know, as it's blowing up, we're just very consistently giving our, our other minions a 5% recovery over and over and over and over and over. Um, and it's not always this slow. You have to think like when they're rushing to a mob, uh, they're melee attacking and, you know, they're losing another 15%. So the, the whole thing is, ex is, is expedited um, when you're actually in the heat of the map or the, or the boss fight. Um, the links in our helmet, Ray Spectre, Minion Live, Stone Golem, and Meat Shield. Because our minions are, in fact, negative Chaos Res, uh, I didn't think it was prudent to run an AG. Because uh, if it does die to some random Chaos damage, and we cannot recover that from the Mastery, um, I, I wanted to avoid having to constantly buy AG items. and So we just ended up with a Stone Golem for some extra regen, um, you know. We're at about, well, I don't have everything up. It's somewhere around 500 plus regen per second. We already went over ta uh, the, the Tabakai, um, our shield, uh, our wand, double minion. This is very easy to craft, uh, but it could take you up to 15 div. I think I did mine in about 8 div. Middle of the league, this thing's worth probably easy 30, 35 div. And this is the wand that I would highly recommend um, that you guys uh, go ahead and craft on. We run Skin of the Lords. Your your actual keystone really doesn't matter um, as long as it's a keystone that is not going to brick your build. Ancestral Bond is one of those that will, you know, it possibly. Uh, there's there's a slew of of um, keystones on Skin of the Lords that brick many builds. So uh, before you buy one, double check the keystone. And make sure it's not interacting with your build in any way. Generic life res, minion stat, bone rings. Um, I like, I love using fractured mods for crafting. It just makes everything so much easier. And I love to essence craft. Um, same thing with the boots and the gloves. Just looking for uh, rest capping, attributes, armor, max life. If you can swing plus one socket to the AOE, uh, it is nice to, just to help bolster your, uh, your auras. We have Titan Greaves, some movement speed, res, life regen health, um, all that hoo-ha. Nothing too special or crazy there. Another aspect of this build that is extremely important is our Darkness Enthroned. It does need to be 100%. Um, it's going to cost you about 8 to 10 div. I think I paid 8.5 for this one. And then we run an Animanos. I can never say this right. We, we, we run the... Uh, Damage over time, multi, ghastly eye jewel. And with that, we run five ghastly eye, rare ghastly eye jewels, all of which are more or less the same as the one you see here. Varying, you know, some might be 15% increase, some might be 20, you know, if you've, you've used a minion skill recently. Uh, but we do have five of them. That caps us out for the, the unique uh, jewel at 30%. Plus this one is 60, or it was 90. So we're getting a total 100% uptime of 90% extra DOT multi for our Ignite setup, which is just kind of bonkers. Our flasks, we run uh, Granite Amethyst because we are not uh, currently Chaos capped. I'm sure reses are a little tight. 
um, you could possibly get to at least positive. Uh, but I don't think without some very serious, very serious investment, um, are you going to be able to get your chaos cap? But we do run an amethyst just to help a little bit. Um, Jade and a quicksilver. Uh, there's a little bit of cast speed to help out when we're uh, when we're kind of in the, the thick of it. Uh, some reduced effective curses, a bunch of armor. Uh, we are at 90% PDR. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, it, you know, this is due in part to Bone Barrier. That helps us quite a bit. Now, as far as our links go, we already went over the helmet. We have Defiance Banner, Flammability, and Convocation. Now, part of the reason why we uh, run Convocation is because of our turtle. Our turtle is, like, super slow. Uh, so it is going to be important for us to Convocate especially when we're mapping on a pretty regular basis. Uh, this helps to keep our minions close to us, uh, to keep us more tanky. Uh, and, you know, it provides a nice little, like, you know, I guess uh, HP regen, max life regen, per second every time you convocate. Uh, our links for our boots are, is our support minion setup. We have Raid Zombie, Feeding Frenzy, Combustion, and elemental army uh, our exposure is coming from le army every you know whenever the zombie hits them combustion gives our minions a 25 percent chance to ignite but in order for them to ignite they have to be dealing fire damage um which they are getting from this ghastly eye jewel uh, if you end up running combustion and you do follow the build exactly you will need to get minions deal additional fire damage somewhere in your build i would recommend in one of the ghastly eye jewels so they even have the ability to ignite and that thus, you know, decreasing the fire res by another 10%, helping our ignites deal even more damage. Now, our glove houses our auras. Um, one of our auras is over here, uh, but we have Defiance Banner, Tempest Shield, and I dropped Determination out of, the, out of the gym links, got it on the turtle so we could then run Malevolence Link to generosity for even more damage over time for our little SRS boy. And then in our wand, we have the trigger setup, desecrate bone offering, and summon skitterbots. Now for our main damaging setup, our main links, we have SRS of Enormity, level 31, link to empower level 4, minion life, swift affliction, ignite pro live, and burning damage. This one's very important. Um, because SRS of Enormity does have the fire tag, uh, we can take huge advantage of the plus one of uh, supported fire skill gems. So that puts us at 31, and we've really, really tried to focus heavily on Ignite. Um, this build is almost 9 million Ignite DPS per second. Um, in mapping, it's almost 6 million in Guardian and Pinnacle. Um, and it's honestly, from what you saw from the footage, it is kind of a beast. One little bitty minion is able to just melt bosses like that. It's really incredible. Now, what I want to go over next is uh, a little bit of the passive tree and, uh, and how the defenses work. We don't get super crazy with the defenses. The tree itself is extremely straightforward. Uh, we will run a single medium cluster, hulking courses. I would highly recommend that you at least get four decks minimum. The other two small passives can be whatever you would like them to be if you're missing some res or something like that. Uh, by all means, pick it up here. Mandatory dexterity, 100%. This build is very dex starved, hence why we take the agility um, 30 dex node. Uh, we run hooking corpses. Um, you could run a 5 or a 6 passive. Uh, I ended up with a 6, and it works out just fine. Um, save all of your jewel uh, sockets for ghastly eye jewels. Um, save for one, which we'll get to in a second. Obviously, minion instability. Pick up life, any kind of minion health damage nodes. You know, come down here, get gray pack. Um, we get some extra block here. And for the masteries, we're picking up 50 max life. And because we've run skin of the lords, we can then take advantage of... 15% increase max life if there are no life modifiers on your Katapani armor. Skin of the Lords does not have such a mod. Um, so it's just a nice little uh, boost to our overall max life. And I love this mastery. It's, I'm a huge fan of it. As far as uh, masteries on our minion wheels, 30% increase max life. 
Vineyards recovered 5% of life on many deaths. Huge. And 20% increased effective offering. Currently, with Mistress of Sacrifice, we have 100% uptime with on 75-75 block. So we are pure block, no glancing blows, max block, 100% of the time. And the way this is achieved is through our charms. We have three 30% offerings, right? 30% increased effective offerings. Plus another 20 here. So we have 110% increased effect of our bone offer. And what this allows us, it allows us to invest less in the passive tree for block and allows us to pick up more life and more um, ignite scaling for our SRS deed. Uh, we pick up death attunement for our third, uh, our, excuse me, our third specter. Ultra important. Gotta have three specters. And I would recommend minimum level 97. If you want the build to perform the way it's performing in the videos for you, I really stress 97 really is a nice spot to be. And then, you know, if you want to take it to 100, you know, you're more than welcome to. There's plenty of things you can do. Another, there's two other things that help out our block to, to keep it max 100% of the time, not, you know, non-conditional. Red Nightmare, be sure to pick up Faith and Steel to get that extra block chance. And then finally, our anoint Estudo life on uh, life on block block recovery, six percent chance to block uh, puts us at seventy five seventy five. That trigger is always up. That duration far exceeds uh, the trigger rate cooldown. Um, so, uh, if you are leveling this, I would level this as you know on hit minion instability no ignite. Um, and just run with that. It, it's so much easier to level, I promise you. And I would take Golem of Darkness into Mindless Aggression, into Bone Barrier, and leave Mistress of Sacrifice for your Uber Lab. These two can be swapped uh, if you want to feel more tanky earlier. Uh, but, you know, I leave that up to you guys to decide. And for leveling this build, I have a full leveling POB that'll take you all the way up to 95. It is the leveling POB for the on-hit version of this build. And that is what I would recommend you guys do until you get to a point where you can drop enough currency into this build. The cost of this build, anywhere between 40 and 50 div. If you want to scale your chaos res to, you know, to cap, where, where you know, you're probably tacking on another 20 div, um, depending on crafting and buying those items. So, you know, you, you know depending on how tanky you want to be as far as chaos uh, damage goes scaling your max max hit through your uh, armor and energy shield mastery you know you know anywhere between 40 and 60 dev for this build i originally made this build not because it's this excellent performer in all aspects of the game but this build is the reason why i love this game it's the reason i have almost six thousand hours in this game the things that you can do the uniqueness that your builds can offer you is not matched anywhere in the ARPG industry, genre, whatever you want to call it. I made this build because it's unique. You know, we use a shield that almost nobody uses. Nobody uses this for minions, nobody. And it has such good synergy with our Tavukai. And then even more synergy with our Necromantic Aegis. I mean... This build is, I love this build. I have had a ton of fun bossing with this build. It is highly reliable with max block. The mapping does leave some, you know, something to desire, but it's not the worst. And my goal for this build was, can I make a single SRS build work? Unequivocally, yes. And that makes me really happy. It makes me super giddy, you know? The Lone Ranger is a real build, and and I am extremely excited to be able to share this with you guys, and and you know all the um, tinkering and theory crafting that I did for this was a lot of fun, and so it just it brings me a lot of joy to be able to to bring this kind of meme build to you guys and have it perform super well. Um, so I will leave the POB to this character in its current form. I'll leave that in the uh, description below, as well as the leak start POB that I suggest you using if you end up leveling this build. Yeah, I think that's it. I will be posting this in written form to the forums, and uh, let's cross our fingers and you know maybe we get maybe we get lucky enough and get build of the week. That's what I'm aiming for on this build. 
is build of the week. So let's cross our fingers. Let's do some prayers. And that's it. Appreciate you guys spending some of your quality time with me. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Be good and take care of yourselves.